Hello my beautiful and valuable friends and welcome to this channel. I'm Tete Vick and today in this video we will discuss an intriguing subject about dating. I think this is the most interesting video because it will have before, while on dating and after dating. So <laughs> it will kind of cover everything. So if you don't have time to watch other parts, because I have created many different parts about dating, talking about completely different things, then watch this and you can you can get the full grip, to be honest, in one go. <laughs> if you need something quick, I think this is the best way. Because you know, very often we underestimate the meaning of dating and we don't understand that the dating has a purpose and to make it very effective in our life we need to actually learn about dating because dating is like a muscle you know you train it it's like a skill you develop it you know it's something that you exercise you practice until you master it and remember that dating above all is a courtship and in the end of the courtship, you have this valuable, beautiful, balanced, healthy relationship. So definitely learn about the dating to create the love life that you actually crave and wish and long for. I want to tell you that if you are interested in this subject or in anything else, you know, touching the topics as self-worth, self-value, self-love, self-acceptance, you know, self-esteem, then definitely get in touch with me and we will set one-to-one -one private consultations with you, go through these subjects with you so you can grow and you can succeed in your life more with each day. And thank you for all my valuable clients for... <clears throat> sharing your opinions, sharing your stories, your success stories, you know, your sad and happy moments with me, because I get to know so much of you and I get to know so much what is happening in the world and therefore I'm able to help more. Therefore, I'm able to create more content to provide more information. So you all are very valuable for me and you know, this, what I do is purely for you. So enjoy it, you know, this is for you. And uh, this time, we are going to discuss uh, dating in a three different aspects. There are three different, um, maybe I would say steps. Yes, it's the easiest way to uh, see this. Because, you know, everything in life has a step. You need to do the step and then the next step follows. So these steps are very much connected with each other. They come from each other so they are like you know linked to each other and if you can succeed in all three steps you can have a successful dating in the end you can have the successful date which will lead hopefully to another date and that date will lead to another type of the date until you establish the relationship I really believe that men and women are too valuable to waste each other's time. I think men and women are too valuable to get abused or used physically. I think men and women are too valuable to be projected as a materialistic object or, uh, you know, as an intimate object. So in my videos, all is very respectful. Men is always projected as a gentleman, as the decent man who knows his worth, who knows his value, who is decent in his behavior, who is a true gentleman, who is confident in his actions with a woman. And woman is a projected as this classy, elegant lady who knows her, her worth, who doesn't give her body or her soul or her ideas to every man, who knows what she wants, who has this dignifying image of femininity in herself, who takes care of herself a lot and who is willing to communicate her standards with a man and who is always also very grateful and thankful. You know, dating is a huge subject and as logical we can be, as better for us. Because if we learn different tricks, different, hear different advices, understand different elements of the dating, we can be more effective in dating. And remember that above all, when you have studied all, it's time to go actually to the dance floor and dance. It is the time to go to the scene place and actually 
act you know it's the time for you to have the game going on and by game i mean it is something fun it is something light it is something flirtatious it is something you know where it has this beautiful atmosphere of the romance that is the game what i mean by um by this word it's something that you play you know the rules for any game, there are rules. You know the rules, what you're supposed to be doing, what you where you're supposed to go, where what are you supposed to wear. You know these rules. But in the same time, you know it is a game. And you are not judging anybody if they mistreated you. You are not too harsh on yourself if you didn't know your value and you did a mistake with somebody. And you are having a good time. You are experimenting, you are experiencing, you are growing, and you are enjoying the process. Because, you know... I definitely, definitely wish for you for one day to meet this right person for you. You see, no, it's not, I'm not saying perfect person because we are not created perfect. And that's why we are actually very beautiful because we are not perfect and we're not supposed to be perfect because if <clears throat> everybody is perfect, <coughs> sorry, if everybody is perfect, then what, what is the interest in that? You know, nobody can ever fail. Nobody will ever cry. So if there is nobody crying, we will never need somebody who actually says, you can cry off my shoulder. If there is nobody, you know, hurt, we will never have a person who can give support. I'm not saying we need these negative emotions, um, you know, to feel the positive ones. But I'm just saying that, you know, this is all part of life. And not being perfect, it's what makes you beautiful. And just cherish that in you. And, uh, you know, just understand that uh, perfection is actually in imperfection. And um, it's very interesting that if you scientifically, you know, uh, cut a person into the half, it's very interesting. And there are measurements that they calculate. It's, it's incredibly interesting research that they show that our sides are completely different. So, you know, my right side is completely different from my left side. And, you know, my right hand is completely different from my left hand. And everything, you know, even the sizes of the hands, of the legs, of the eyes, of the eyebrows, of the side of the lips. It's so interesting. Everything is not symmetrical. Hmm? You will think it's symmetrical. I mean, I'm very symmetrical. I think that's why I have a... <clears throat> traditional uh, beauty and I have very classical beauty you know everybody uh, more likely would say I'm beautiful because of the symmetrical features I have but in the same time no person is symmetrical if you cut a person in half they will be asymmetria which makes the person perfect in math also if you take any page anything that is actually just you know has the straight line and you take you know magnifying glass and you put that page or 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 anything that is you know straight um, under the magnifying glass, you will see that every millimeter, you know, millimeter is extremely tiny. You can't really see it; <clears throat> it's that tiny. Every millimeter is um, different from the other one. <coughs> Sorry, every millimeter is different from the other one, and that makes it actually straight. So there is no straight line for more than one millimeter in the universe. So if there is nothing straight in the universe, there is nothing symmetrical in the universe, why do you think you need to be perfect? Maybe we're actually created to be imperfect so we can glorify our creator who is perfect. The only uh, spirit that is perfect is God. There is nothing else perfect in this world and that's the beauty and the grace that we live in. Uh, so yes, I definitely wish you to get that um, a great match, the right person for you in this dating experience. So now um, let's uh, understand what we're going to talk about today. So number one, we will talk about what you need to know before you go on a date. Before. This is pre-dating. So anything that happens before the actual date. When we learn that, we will very easily maneuver our way on to the second step. And that is what we need to know on a date. So this is the actual date. Oh my God, I am so excited. 
yes, this is really nice poem. And, you know, this is, I think, all women and all men, this is the best part they want to know about. And I will be very, very, you know, giving you all the points. I will be very specific, very selective, so you can learn a lot of information. And then the third step, after we got prepared before the date, we had the actual date, is after the date. What you need to do and know about after what happens in it, uh, after the date. So, as you can see, they're very logical, very structural, and it is a system. So, it is, it is a very specific system. And you cannot skip, you know, one of the steps. Can I just go on a date and not bother what will happen before or after? Or can I just wonder and worry only what will happen after the date? Or can I just worry and prepare myself for the date and not actually go on a date? You see, it doesn't work. None of the versions work. So, you need to have all the three steps understand what to do before the date, understand what to do on the date itself, and understand what to do after the date. So get ready, get comfortable, get yourself cozy. If you need a moment, you can pause me. <laughs> you can pause me and go for a nice cup of tea or some snack if you wish and come back, make yourself very comfortable, take some notepad if you need to make some notes, because sometimes, you know, when you watch these kind of videos, it is so relevant to make some notes, because after 10 minutes or maybe 10 days, you will forget, but if you made, you know, a little note, or you took even a, a little sticky note, and you wrote two sentences that really triggered you, and you put on your fridge, you can never forget that. You know, when you're writing anything, I always encourage my um, on my consultations people to write notes because when you're writing anything, so what happens? Your hand is connected with the pen. So when you're writing and you're using the pen, because we get to know the world through our ends of the fingers, that's how we actually get to know the world. Everything is by touch, you know, especially when we're small. I mean, by the touch, and of course, we put everything in our mouth because we want to understand what it is. And of course, by the eyes, you know, by the sight or by the smell. But the majority of how the brain functions is through the ends of our fingers. That's why a lot of people who are musical, they have senses of the world a little bit more intense than people who are not musical. So that's a great plus for people who play piano or other, you know, musical instrument. So when you're writing something, if you can make some notes during this video, it will actually make your brain to remember the information more vividly and it will go to the long-term memory. So definitely take advantage of this if you know it works well. And if, if uh, you know, there is something that I say that triggers you and you think this is, you know, this is the one sentence I want to take from the video, just write on a little you know, post-it note, put on your fridge or in your car or in your, you know, um, um, bedroom, or you can even have a big, you know, notepad where you're writing different ideas from different videos of mine or other videos or from the books. And it is always reminding the, remaining there because the hand and the eyes when you're writing, it memorizes things. It goes to the long-term memory and it actually sticks, it puts information in a specific folder. So it's very influential. But of course, if you have a sharp memory and you're just on the go, maybe you are in your car, maybe you are just waiting for your date to come, you know, or maybe you have a break, then you can just listen. That is fine too. Enjoy my voice and get this information rooted in your own mind. So number one, let's go a uh, really exciting subject. I'm so excited. I cannot wait, you know, to tell all steps. I just want to tell everything right away. <laughs> okay, so number one is what do you need to know about before going on a date? So about dating before you actually go on, a, uh, on the date. What are these pre-dating advices that I would give to anybody? Number one is uh, be selective. You know, know your target, be selective, invest your time in the right people. You know, don't waste your time if you see this is not the person for you. Uh, number two, I will say this is very easy, but uh, yet a lot of people do not do that. Yet this is very a uh, natural thing to do. I would say if you don't remember anything from this video and you can take one this step, it will incredibly change the whole dynamics of your dating. I have tried this on uh, multiple uh, clients of mine and uh, especially women have given me such a strong positive 
feedback that I know it works. And I have done it as well in the past, you know, myself, I tried this and it really works. It really saves time. And most of all, it helps you to be more selective and actually be with people that choose you as you choose them. So it's a true interest involved. You will say, okay, now I'm intrigued. What is it? <laughs> it's very simple. You know, nowadays we are all hang up in the society, in um, our phones. We are on the social media and we are so much connected on a virtual online, online, that we underestimate the power of communication in person. You see, if I just write these things and you read, they, of course, will be powerful things to read. And I like to write the articles. But you know why this is actually giving a big power and impact on your hearing right now? It's because I am live. I'm a real person. I'm talking. I'm moving. I'm breathing. Even my plants are moving around. <laughs> so this is live. Therefore, for you, it is way easier, way more organic to grasp this information more easier. So take this, take this and try to always do things that are in person. So if you can listen to the video of a human who is actually moving is much better than just reading. If you can uh, talk with a person in person in some, you know, social place, it's much better than if you're talking with them in, um, you know, dating site. And online dating, of course, is part of our society, but also understand that it is you who determines how will your online dating experience go and flourish. I understand there is the second party involved. So if you're a woman, there is a man involved. Or if you're a man, there is a woman involved. There is a second person involved. That is natural. If it's not involved, if he or she is not involved, then <laughs> you cannot call it dating. It's just talking with yourself. But yes, yeah, so when this second person is involved, of course, there is a, another dynamic of the person. There is another energy going. But you need to understand that you need to own this. So in this way, you are the boss. You are the master who chooses how the things will go. If somebody makes you uncomfortable, you just step away. You just, you know, pull yourself away from that situation and walk away. If somebody makes you very comfortable, you compliment them, you appreciate them, and you go forward. So it is up to you. You are the master in this game. So definitely be selective. And when you're selective, I will suggest you, before going on a date, skip that texting. I mean, you can text some logistic, you know. Texts are mainly for the logistics to understand where you're meeting, what time you're meeting. Just ask very uh, simple, casual question, how, are, how was your day? But texting is never going to be that key element of getting to know somebody. Never. And you need to always remember that, that if you have only texting, that is not real relationship, that is not real dating. So you will say, what is that I can do? The best advice I have given to the clients and the best uh, maybe tip that works like miracle. There is, it's, it's a, you know, it's a guaranteed game. It is a, um, it is something that can never fail. You know, it's, it is, you can always predict good results with this. Now I will take a breath because this is so huge. It is setting up a call. I love this because setting up a call can dramatically increase your chances to be quicker on your selective process when you're choosing who to date. Setting up the call can immensely benefit you because you will save so much time. I promise you. And setting up the call will allow you to actually get to know the person in a more real, realistic world before you go on a date. You know, the call um, has such a power because you can have your time, think exactly what you want to respond to the text, think where you're going to put the comma, think where, when are you going to send, so plan it carefully, which you can completely not do when you're talking on the phone because you will be natural. You will just say, 
things that you think of course you're still controlling you're still thinking what you need to say but it is less likely for you to have time to think about it you will be just natural you will say the things you think about you will just respond to questions or even if you say uh mm, people will see okay this is a lie or this is something that this person is hiding so it is amazing power to actually have a call set the call with a person you want to go on a date if you have never met them I mean, if you go on a social event or it's maybe, you know, it's a new restaurant opening or it could be a beautiful concert you attend or opera or in any other event and somebody approaches you and you speak in there and you spend maybe 30 minutes, maybe you, you know, go in a quiet corner, maybe they treat you with um, a nice uh, drink and I'm, I don't mean alcohol, but I always prefer non-alcoholic drinks. So if somebody wants to treat you, always ask for non-alcoholic uh, so you you can be wide open and wide awake, uh, you know, and open in understanding this person. You need to be wide open, like your eyes need to be open, your mind needs to be open to understand, oh, is this the right person for me? So definitely, if you meet... <clears throat> In social event, that is amazing. At the networking event or you go to the dance class, you meet somebody. That is amazing. So you get to know them anyway in a real world. And of course, you don't need to have that many calls anymore because you met them in person. But if you met them in person, you still want to have some calls before you go on a second date or the third date. You still want to have phone conversations because only those conversations that are real, not virtual, matter. So avoid te much texting because it doesn't lead to anything. And it is just purely for logistics and understand what you need to do and where. Never use text to explain your feelings or upsetment or, or, you know, discuss or negotiate things. This is not what text is for. It's only real conversation. That is where you uh, show your emotions. So when you set the call, it can be video call as well. If you really are not sure about this person you met online, you can have a call on the phone. Discuss maybe 10-15 minutes. I wouldn't say five minutes because that is not enough. In five minutes, you can be very nice. Oh, yes, I'm having a great day. Five minutes is very easy to fake. But when you speak 15 minutes, 20 minutes, I would say even 30 minutes, you get to know so much about that person, about their family, about their background, about what is that they do in life. So you can discuss so many things. You can communicate your standards. You can say what you're looking for. You can say, you know, maybe we can just be honest before we go on a date. Can I just ask you these few questions just to make sure we're on the same page? You see how I'm speaking. I'm sure if I tell that to any of you, you will never refuse me because I'm so respectful and I'm so kind and I have a sweet voice. So you will not refuse. So you can be the same way. You can communicate your standards with a sweet voice, with a smile on your face the, and, and still get, you know, uh, your questions answered. A uh, good recommendation when you're speaking over the phone, imagine you see that person and actually when you're speaking, stand beside the mirror and look at yourself and say, Hi, so how was, this, how was your day? Oh, I'm so happy to hear your voice. You have an interesting accent and you just smile during the time and you're looking at yourself. So it's like a person there and you're hearing this person. So it's, it's really, you know, it's really helpful when you can look at yourself in a mirror or if you can't, if you are sitting somewhere, you know that there is no mirror, you can just smile. Imagine you're speaking over the uh, phone, but with a smile. I will tell you, this is incredibly interesting, but the person uh, on the line can actually feel you're smiling because your voice changes. Because you see, when I'm smiling and I'm talking, you can sense I'm smiling because my tone changes. If I'm very serious, I would like to ask you a few questions. Do you see my tone changes because of the way how the, my mouth gets structured? But if I say, you know, I would like to ask you a few questions. Do you feel this vibe? Do you feel this femininity? Do you feel this, uh, you know, flirtatious um, energy? And that is very attractive, you know. It is not a, um, you know, FBI call where you need to find the missing child, you know. <laughs> ah, sometimes I make myself laugh, you see. It's a good quality, actually. Uh, try to, as well, uh, laugh 
when you are talking over the phone. Make some jokes, you know, be easy. Don't be really serious. That will push the people off. So you can have a little call. And then if the call is good, you can always also pass on actually having a video call. Just make sure you're dressed, you know, you're not in the bathroom or a kitchen. There is not much noise. You're sitting or, or you're standing, whichever is comfortable. And you can have a little video call. So if you had a chat online, few text messages, you exchange, you understood that your standards are the same. Then you had a call with this person, you get to hear their voice, get to hear how they talk, they get to hear if they're respectful, if they're using bad words, if they are actually respectful to you. Are they interesting? Do they have interesting topics you discuss? Then you can connect to the video call where you can see them. So I will say in like one hour maximum, you got to know them in all levels. And after one hour, you actually know, is it worth to go on a date? So in some way, this is already your date. The date already happened. <laughs> but this before date experience prevents you losing your time. Because, you know, I admit many of my clients tell me that when they had calls, they were shocked because they didn't like the person's voice. They didn't like the words and the cursing the person was using. A lot of my clients, even men, said that the woman was just giggling and she was not one second serious. Another man said that she was so serious that I got scared of her, you know. So men and women are very different. And by these talks, by these phone calls, you actually get to know the person. And so many clients of mine said this was the life savior for them because they saved so much time avoiding on dressing up driving to the place you know paying for the person and then go driving back it's like four hours they just did it 30 minutes and they understood this person is not for me you know this is so valuable if you can just do something that you are not supposed to do in four hours you get to know do that in 30 minutes not going out from your house. I mean, still good, look good, you know, still do the grooming, but it is possible. Video calls are very nice as well. Just make sure you know a person a little bit. I would say do the phone call first and then kind of smoothly go to the video call. It's, it's really helpful sometimes to see the person, make sure that they are actually the right people. Some of my women clients said that when he connected over the video, they felt that they're completely not attracted and it's not their type. And they were very nice. They spoke 10 minutes. They said, how are you? How was your day? And then they turn it off. And then a man usually said to them, oh, I really liked you. Let's go for a date. And she said, many of my clients said that they just were very honest and said, thank you. But I don't feel romantic attraction. And the men said, that's fine. I respect that. Good luck for you to find what you're looking for. And you see this 30 minutes saved time for both that man and that woman. And multiple times I have heard these stories. So definitely, my dear friends, it does work. And maybe it's time for you to try. There's nothing scary in that. I think that is much better than putting four hours, you know, two hours back and forth and then one hour getting ready, two hours on a day. That's five hours already. 30 minutes is much better on the call to invest than to invest five hours and then come devastated, you know, that, oh, why did I not speak with him over the phone? Why did I not actually hear his voice? Or why did I not see how he actually looks like? I went there and he was a completely different person, you know? And catfishing is happening very often. I never had in my life, never. I just don't know. I don't attract those kind of things in my life. But I heard a lot of stories that um, I heard one man went on a date and there was a completely different woman, different size, different weight, different color of the hair. It was like a completely different person. He didn't even recognize her. And she just came, went to his car and he was sitting shocked. He's like, who are you? And she's like, oh, I'm this and that. And he's like, well, you're a catfish. You look completely different. She said, oh, well, I'm a bit ashamed of my size and this, this. And he was devastated. He was devastated. Whole consultation, he was so angry and so mad. And I said, you know, you just need to video call next time. And, you know, after two weeks, that's exactly what he did. He said, oh, I'm so tired of this. You know, I want to make sure. And he spoke with this uh, girl was actually from his country so i think it was a good match already in the beginning <laughs> made him heaven and yes and they spoke and he said do you mind if we you know um they were ha having a phone call and he said do you mind if we just video chat quickly and she said no no problem just give me a few minutes uh, you know she was on in, in his car in her car so she just turned the camera on and she took her glasses off she had like a sunglasses and he said 
she said she looked even more beautiful than on a picture and they spoke maybe like one hour or so uh, both you know and they had a good time and uh, after two dates uh, two days he invited her on a real date and they're still dating so they're very happy you know so hopefully everything goes well for them but you see that really helped and uh, the girl was all right she was not like oh what are you talking about maybe she heard my videos <laughs> But yes, I'm, I'm very happy that it's working and it is really working for everybody. So make sure that it works for you as well. And now going forward, you need to be um, quite open and ask the questions you want. Uh, it's like a job interview. You know, when you are going for a good company, for a good position, you usually go into the companies and they actually need to register you, you need to have a phone call with them. If you pass the phone call, then you go to the building. So do the same with your dating, you know, be a little bit more efficient, be a little bit more open to that and be a little bit more serious about how you perceive this and how you approach dating. So definitely phone calls, definitely video calls, definitely more talking, getting to know each other and only then dating. Now let's jump to the part where, you know, you actually go on a date. This is so much fun. <laughs> when you already had a conversation with a person, you got ready, you know, um, then you are going on a date, then make sure. So this is the second step, going on a date itself. Make sure that you know where you're going. You know the location. You know, if you need Google Maps, check that. If your phone is dying, ask somebody before you get lost. You know, save that person's number. Maybe write on a page if you know your battery is not going to last. So prepare yourself location-wise, you know, and definitely be on time. You don't need to be like, you know 30 minutes before but be on time you can be five minutes late i think there's nothing no nothing no problem in that especially when a woman is five minutes late that's kind of kind of cute i would say and very beautiful women historically and you know actresses they have always said that they're late like fashionably late you know 5 10 15 minutes but not more than 15 minutes of course don't be late more than 15 minutes that is a bit too much but men generally they like when a woman is on time so if you can please be on time if there is emergency just communicate and uh, it will be sorted i remember i had once uh, a date and i was one hour late mm -hmm. and he waited he waited and then he took me for a nice meal you know and and he was not upset at all but I communicated with him because, you know, my driver, he was stuck because they were changing the roads. So we could just not move, you know, and it was raining. So there was no chance for me to come out and just walk, you know, <laughs> in a white dress. How are you going to walk in the rain like 30 minutes? And uh, he was actually very kind. He kind of drove closer. So we were, tr we were trying to get it closer to each other. And I was just communicating with him on the phone. But yes, I was one hour late uh, and he waited. <laughs> and uh, so it's no problem i think if the man is really interested he will understand but of course try to be on time and it is for men as well definitely if you're a man don't make a woman wait she will be very upset <laughs> Okay, and definitely know that you need to meet in a public place. So you're not meeting anybody in his car, you're not meeting anybody in his house, you're not meeting them with their friends and family event. No, you're meeting in a public, open, beautiful place where you can hang out together, where can you, when you can get to know each other. And that needs to be something natural, something, some place that is a very natural to be at. I'll definitely say that you need to also meet in a decent hours. Don't meet very early in the morning when everybody's asleep because then it's a question why you are being hidden. Uh, don't meet in a lunchtime when you don't have actually time. You have 30 minutes and you 15 minutes to get there, 15 minutes to eat. That is rushed. You know, you're not fresh and there is a pressure for you to go back to your errands or go back to work. And it's a pressure for the other person as well. And definitely don't meet very late in the evening because that sends a very wrong signal. And it's a question for you. What is this person actually looking for that he or she is asking me to meet so late? Uh, definitely think about danger. Think about your safety because in the end of the day these are strangers you never knew them if you have a person who you grew up with for like 15 years and suddenly he's asking you for a date of course you will allow him to pick you up because you know each other your families grew up with each other but if it's a person you meet yesterday online today you spoke with him over the phone or her and tomorrow you are going on a date there is no chance there is a pickup involved he's not picking you up and you are not, you know, um, picking him up. So 
be understanding of this, you know, safety measurements. I understand you're all romantic and, you know, on your, you know, seventh sky, but you need to as well ground yourself and understand that I need to be careful, actually. You know, these are stranger people, you know, there are many things happening. But of course, I'm not scaring you. I'm just, you know, preventing you. It's like, you know, when we have children, we say uh, to our ch children that don't speak with a stranger. There is a meaning why we say that because child is very naive. So don't be naive. Be an adult. You know, take care of yourself. Take care of your um, safety. So not meeting in undecent hours. Meeting only in a decent hours. And the best, if you would tell me, can you just tell me the best hours to meet? I will definitely say on a weekend's. For the brunch, it's amazing time to meet. You're both relaxed. You got your sleep. You're ready to, you know, get to know each other. Or a beautiful time in the evening to go for a, a nice meal, for a nice dinner, you know, to get to know each other or sit in a lounge um, where it's nice music, you know, candles. Uh, but it's quite quiet. It's not loud. No bars, no clubs, you know, no places like that. That is not for dating. That is, you know, I don't know what is it for. <laughs> So definitely understand these things. And um, the, the second time, the, so these two times are the best. The, the brunch uh, when it's on a weekend or it can be late afternoon in a weekend or it can be evening. Um, and I would say there is a huge video that I did that people really um, resonate with and people are discussing more and more about not doing coffee dates and not doing, not going for drinks because these both things are very simple things to do and it's not much effort involved in there and it means that I want it to be cheap, I want it to be quick, I want it to be effortless, I don't want to invest, I'm not truly interested and I'm not really serious. So these kind of, you know, sentences, they're not saying anything good about it. So coffee dates, if you value yourself, you will skip that because coffee you can buy every day on your, you know, way to work or, or to university if you study. And drinking as well, going for drinks, it is sending a really wrong signal. People usually go for drinks in the evenings. People, you know, get drunk. So why would you do that if you want to get to know somebody? Why alcohol will be involved? Now, you will see a lot of dating coach promoting more and more that actually dating should not have alcohol involved because it is so hard to get to know somebody and you can get into big trouble. And if you think a lot of men as a pickup artist, they're taught that they need to get the woman to have drink with them because as many you know, women get drunk easier. It's scientific fact. It's proven. So as many drinks they can have to the girl to feed her with, she can get drunk easily and then she can give up, you know, her body easily and then they can have intimacy with her. So that's why having drinks night out, it's an already big signal of wrong intentions of a man. Because if the man really wants to know a lady, she, he will more likely say, would you like to go for dinner? Because they actually want to sit down. They want to talk. They want to enjoy the meal. They want to share the meal. And they want to get to know each other, you know, from a different perspective. Which if you are meeting at 9 o'clock or 9.30 for drinks, that can mean only one thing. I cannot wait for you to get drunk so I can get what I want, you know, physically. So you need to be very honest with yourself and understand that dignifying women or men with a value, high value, less likely to do those things. Coffee dates, which are really cheap and do not cost any effort or, you know, going for drinks. And the best I would say, stay one, two hours. Don't stay too long. Don't over you know, value the person, don't overgive, don't over share. You know, I hear sometimes my clients say, I've been with him five hours. I was like, what on earth can you do in five hours? It's like, you know, it's my working day, <laughs> you know? Uh, so I'm just laughing, but because I think it's, it's too much because you can overgive and overdo and then it is not special anymore. The people are not going to want to see you because they're overfed. It's like if you have eight course of the meal, it's less likely you will be hungry that day. You know, it is less likely. So allow them to be a little bit hungry after you leave so they can have this a little aftertaste that they long for more. Leave some mystery. Don't answer to all questions. Don't reveal everything. In other, world, in, in other words, um, words, be less. 
because less will always be more. If you have noticed, um, I love beautiful jewelry and every my piece is a very unique, but I never overdo it. You know, if I have earrings, I can have my ring or I can have a bracelet or I can have a necklace, but not all together. It's or, or. The same is with uh, you if you are a man or a woman. Don't over talk, don't overdo, don't overstay. One, two hours is perfect timing for the date. And if you know, this is more women's, uh, you know, mistake that we do a lot. Sometimes we like the guy so much we can't leave even if we want. I will say plan on purpose something the same evening. So you are forced to leave early. So you are forced to actually leave. Maybe plan to meet your friend or maybe plan to pick up some specific delivery or maybe plan a specific class in a gym that you cannot skip. If you skip, you lose the money that you paid. So make yourself being attached to specific commitment and say, you know, oh, well, if we're meeting at the dinner, for example, dinner starts at six, say, I need to leave eight sharp because 8.30, you already have your dance class, for example. And really leave, you know, really leave and, and say to them, you know, if I forget, can you please remind me? And I remember one time I had a, a date with a nice gentleman and he came, you know, he waited for me. He arrived actually one hour earlier and I was very surprised because, you know, I was in a saloon. There was no chance for me to get earlier. And he said, oh, I'm here. I'm like, that's three o'clock. We're supposed to meet at four. <laughs> I was like, you are early. He said, yes, I am. I was just so excited. And I started driving and there was no traffic. And I said, you know, I'm still in saloon. I'm making my hair, but I will be with you soon. And actually, I didn't arrive even five minutes earlier. I just arrived at four. Um, and, you know, he was happy to see me. But why I'm telling you this that, you know, you need to understand what kind of person you are dating. You need to understand that you need to have some kind of plans and if you have some plans before and you have some plans after you need to stick to this so when i arrived on a date i said to him that you know at so we were meeting at um uh, four and i said uh, you know at six i have a class i need to leave sharply six if i forget could you please remind me and he was very sweet he put the alarm on his phone I could do that, but I was actually testing him, seeing how will he react on this. And he did an alarm and like maybe 30 minutes before he said, oh, it's 530, you know, you need to go soon. And do you want me to drive you? I said, no, it's fine. But uh, I really like that attitude that he actually was the one looking at the watch and he said, well, I cannot wait until we meet next time. You know, I hope you will have more time. I said, well, you never know. <laughs> You know, I still had something else planned after the second day, too. I had something else in the evening. In that way, you know, a woman or a man, you can become more valuable in the eyes of the person because you actually have something else after that. So definitely stick to these. And, you know, if you are a woman, allow men to pay. Don't do this equality thing. Don't argue with him. Don't compete. You know, don't grab the checks. I beg you. If you are traditional, you know, and men actually respect that. Men who is interested in you and takes you out, he's already calculating. I need to take care of this woman, you know. I need to open the door for her. I need to um, maybe settle the bill for her, maybe buy the flowers or whatever it is. But real classical, traditional men has that all covered. So please, um, ladies, men are really complaining to me that ladies do not allow um, them to take care of um, uh, ladies. So allow men to pay for you. Allow the men to open the door for you. Allow the men to, you know, push the chair when you're sitting. Allow the men to order the food for you. In um, older times, there is a charming um, charm schools they were actually teaching that a woman is not supposed to order how it was that a man and a woman they're sitting together and a woman says you know i actually want this so when the waiter comes man is ordering for himself and for a woman and i have um done this many times and men were never against and actually they were asking me so what is that you want and i said you know i would like this and that and can you add this on the side and then when the waiter came, they actually placed my order for me not even asking them because they knew I'm traditional and they were traditional. It was normal for them. So allow men to do these steps. You will say, you know, <clears throat> my friend is saying, you know, how do you, you know, where do you meet these men that are treating you right? I said, you need to be the woman who is treating herself right. Then you will meet these kind of men. 
And she one day said, you're right, because I've been mistreating myself. I've been attracting people who mistreat me as well. But now when I know my standards, I start attracting different men. So she really understood what I mean. And she understood that there is no specific magic I do, or there are no text messages I send, or there is no instruction I give them that you need to buy me flowers when you come. I don't do that all. But somehow they read through my energy that oh this is a woman i need to get the flowers for oh this is a woman i need to open the door oh this is a woman i would like to settle the bill without her even seeing how many times i've seen a man standing up he will be like oh just one moment he will go settle the bill and say okay we can go now i would not even ever see the bill so i want to tell you that there are men who are doing that and if you're traditional and you want that you need to know and have hope there are men so be happy <laughs> there are men and of course above all have fun when you are dating be yourself it's it's not you know you know it's not a big investigation it's, it's nothing serious uh, it is something that is supposed to be light, fun, enjoyable. You experiment, you uh, exercise dating in yourself, and you just experience things, experience people, energies, and you find out what is that you want and what is that you don't want. So definitely enjoy that. And lastly, I want to tell you, when you had the date, you know, before the date, you prepared yourself as well. You know, um, we discussed that before you have a date, you have the call. But don't forget that when you go on a date, you actually need to prepare yourself, you know, do your hair, do your makeup. If you have time, go quickly home and refresh yourself. Go to the shower. If you're a man, take extra shirt and just change at your work. If you're a woman, just refresh your makeup before you go. But definitely make this effort. And whatever you're wearing on the date, make sure it is comfortable i'm always for men to be classical if you can wear a suit if you can wear a shirt any woman will appreciate that just be clean be groomed you know shave yourself brush your teeth groom your hair if you're a woman i will suggest you one piece a dress whatever you are doing if you can wear a dress i guarantee you men will appreciate you as well you know if you can have a little dress little purse little nice uh, high heels you are already on the right vibration. You're already saying, I'm a girlfriend material. I'm a wife material. I take care of myself. You know, I'm ready to invest. I'm ready to make an effort. So, you know, before uh, dating experience, before going on a date, when you groom yourself, when you get ready, and it is not only physically getting ready, but mentally, you say, this is going to be an amazing date. We will have an amazing time. Not that you are putting high expectations on a person, but you know that you will have a good time. And even if nothing works out at least you had a pleasurable experience you had interesting talks maybe they revealed something in you nobody revealed maybe they gave you some business idea nobody ever gave you maybe they said some compliment that you have never heard so take that all prepare yourself mentally prepare yourself physically you know get ready for the the date go on the actual date but don't forget that there is also after date after date, this is the easiest part and this is the quickest part. And I will tell you literally in two minutes. After date, you need to do just three things. First of all, thank the person. Just tell, thank you for coming today. It was lovely meeting you. Thank you for making this effort or thank you for treating me. Second of all, definitely compliment. Compliment something in them that, you know, I had a, such a good time with you because you made me laugh. I think you are just having such a great sense of humor i really appreciate that in you or compliment that he if that's a man that you're dating is a gentleman thank you for opening the doors for me you know for actually coming after me for waiting for me i think that's very gentlemanlike or if you are a man you can say thank you for the lady that thank you to the lady that she actually made an effort that she looks so feminine that she gave you such a feminine energy you can thank her for that and lastly you know allow if you're a woman, men to lead. After you go home, no need to text, no need to call, no need to follow up. So did you like it? So are, are you going to see me again? Are you going to invite me? Allow him to lead. Allow that step to come from men. When the date is over, the man decides how he processes next. If the man wants to write to you, he will. Then the same evening or the next morning. But allow men to lead, please, ladies. I beg you. It's a dance. So to summarize, let's go one more time. Number one step, you need to prepare for the date. So what you need to do before the date, you need to set your standards high, 
be selective on the partner you're going to see and partner I don't mean as a business but a partner that you actually want to build something with I would actually not even use that word I would say just a love object I always say that I don't like partner this is it's very dry for me so select your love object wisely and then make the call make the video call chat with this person get fully ready make the effort when you go on a date second step when you are on the date make sure you're on time make sure that you're on the right location with the right person don't overspend your time maybe one two hours and be wise when you go on a, on a date don't go too early in the mornings don't go on the lunch time don't go very late in the evening the best is weekends and the best is a nice normal evening for a dinner and also you know avoid places like cinemas or shows or extreme jumping from the rocks these are extremes for the first date the best first date is just a simple dinner start with that and after all when the date is over after the date Thank the person, compliment him or her with something that triggered you and allow ladies, men to lead. I thank you for your attention, for being in here. If you want to know more, if you need some help in your dating life, please let me know. Contact me and we will set one-to-one -one private consultations and we will get this ball rolling for you so you can be more successful and effective in dating. And remember, you are created for a royal and beautiful life. That's why I encourage you to smile, be happy and enjoy life.